Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. CitizenCon 2953 had the Taking Flight panel. This showed a variety of improvements that are coming to ship combat, ship immersion, sort of cockpit interactions, loads of stuff here that's really going to make Star Citizen and its ships and flying and atmospheric stuff all awesome. Let me just take you through it. Cockpit immersion. They want a really, really realistic experience here. When you enter your ship seat, they've got this new relaxed state before you actually flight ready your ship and turn the power on so you can sort of look around your ship and you don't have your hands on the actual controllers or dashboard. You'll have more physical interactions as well with your ship and when you actually power it on, you'll, you'll grab the stick, you'll push buttons, all that sort of jazz and as you um, actually hit hotkeys or whatever, you'll actually do those actions. There's a new ship UI which is less intrusive it's got a lot less clutter on the screen. It's more relevant based on your operator mode. There's customization available here too. Different ship manufacturers have different styles of dashboards and indicators. There are entirely new MFDs which are simpler to use and navigate. You can see more information on systems and weapons too. You can use the mouse or hotkeys um, to actually interact with everything. They have added about a hundred keybinds for this. So everything that you could possibly do in your cockpit can now be done with a keybind. There is a ton of customization that persists with your MFDs, and you can also cast your MFDs, multifunction displays, to your helmet if you have an appropriate helmet and visor. They flied around Checkmate Station in the sort of demo they did. This is all around the new Pyro Playground area. They've improved the feel of flying for a pilot. It does look a lot better for the, for the way sort of ships move. Um, there's small head motions with your character that sort of make it a bit more immersive, camera shake and FAV changes for afterburner, but you should have a more reactive and snappy experience just as you're moving your ship around where appropriate. They added um, or at least re-added sticky throttle, which you can now turn on and off um, if you want it. You can no longer tricord um, as of experimental master modes, and so the, the new master mode system sort of prevents that. Your master mode is now shown in your HUD as well, so it will show SEM or NAV, and in SEM sort of mode, your max speed is restricted, you can't cruise, um, you can't go into quantum, but you've got access to your weapons and shields and all that sort of jazz, and you can briefly use afterburner to boost and get a big speed boost. The boost is much stronger when moving forward now though, so um, as I said no tricording um, and um, the uh, sort of systems if you try and strafe and use boost or, or afterburner um, for left and right or reverse it's not as strong. Nav mode allows for higher max speeds and quantum but you haven't got access to your shields and weapons. Switching modes while in combat could be quite dangerous. Uh, there is a new quantum travel experience as well. So quantum travel now fully physicalized and it looks a load better. You'll accelerate when you go into quantum and you'll have to keep your ship steady while accelerating into quantum and then once you've got to um, you're sort of fully accelerated and you're in your quantum tunnel you can then take your hands off and actually travel there without risk of falling out uh, of, of the quantum tunnel, um, which I really like. Um, your IFCS as well takes time to recover if you do fall out, if you do something wrong. Maybe some crazy people will use this as a tactic. Um, it, yeah, it's really interesting. Quantum boosting allows you to do shorter range jumps as well, but they are hands-on throughout. And you, you are sort of accelerating throughout, as it were. Uh, you can do it in any direction as well. You don't need a nav point. You can just go boost in a direction. But if you have a nav point, you'll boost to the nav point. They boosted to Pyro 3, and there were a load of NPC ships here, and they talked about improving AI ship combat. So they want challenging AI that don't fly ships perfectly and can sometimes make mistakes and are also um, sort of driven by traits. Now, this is markedly different from AI just not working sometimes in the um, persistent universe. A lot of the AI there, if it was working as intended, would be a significant amount better than we've got in the persistent universe, but obviously server problems and various other things cause the NPCs to grind to a halt sometimes or not work as intended. Um, but um, they're improving what the AI and NPCs are supposed to be and what they're supposed to have been anyway. So. Um, they're just making them a lot more sensible and better. There are a load of types of maneuvers that AI will now attempt to make for engaging and combat. Uh, NPCs can strafe and try to orbit larger targets. More experienced NPCs will do various evasion techniques. They want longer times to kill, especially on larger ships. 
for Idris battles um, and things like that. They want them to be really, truly epic. And when you're in a smaller ship, you might not be able to penetrate a larger ship, sort of hull fully and deal damage to the components therein, but you might be able to take out some vulnerable parts. So they want to do a load of weapon tuning in the Persistent Universe. Everything's very similar at the moment. They've done a load of weapon tuning in Squadron 42, and they'll be bringing that into Star Citizen. They're bringing back the singed, like, tachyon weapon, and they're making it the same difficulty as other weapons are to use, rather than just the meta weapon that everyone wants to use. They want to make fights happen at closer range, but in the future, weapon ranges are going to be massively increasing, but weapon spirit is a thing, and an effective range is sort of controlled by that. So you'll go, well, what's the range of my weapon? It's huge, but a lot of that's just going to be fire off into the distance, not hit anything. Now, when your pip is green, that will show a high chance of hit, but you can still hit when it's red. It's just much less likely. You don't get a size down for weapons either now when you are gimbling them. So you keep the sort of full size of the weapon while gimbled. You'll get separate pips for different weapons as well. They have a new pips and targeting mode for more precision aiming. They showed precision targeting as well, which basically is a mode that zooms you in and lowers your uh, RPM of your gimbals and, and your turrets and all that sort of jazz. Uh, you can paint turrets and systems, assumedly as well, and your gimbal will try and aim there. So they used this to take out the Hammerhead's turrets that they were fighting. They then went into the atmosphere of Pyro 3, which is now called Bloom, I believe. Uh, spaceships don't like atmospheric flight much because they're spaceships. They're not in space. They're built for space. Uh, their thrusters overheat more quickly. They showed control surfaces and fins as part of this sort of uh, and the new aerodynamic system. You cannot turn around very easily in atmosphere. Ships act as planes do in atmosphere now. Um, so you'll need to roll and pull. They purposely stored the ship and showed how it would recover if you didn't have thrusters um, that, and an IFCS sort of helping you. Uh, gliding works with the system. When you come to a stop, your thrusters take over and try and VTOL you, but wind and awkward movement and other forces can disrupt you and push you back into traveling forward. And obviously if your um, thrusters overheat, lots of interesting things can happen. Boom! That's it for your taking flight presentation from CitizenCon 2953. I'm really interested to know what you think of all of those new updates that are going to be coming to ship flight in the not too distant future. Master modes, deeper immersion with your ship, a, just a better experience, new quantum travel stuff, atmospheric flight improvements. What do you think? Tell me all your things down in the comments below. Do you like using your eye holes for extra immersion in Star Citizen and help aim and do some cool stuff? Well, you can with Toby Eye Track 5, which is on sale at the moment. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat, both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit, and both Zin and I have one. Use the links below to grab one for 15% off or to find out more. What the hell are you? It's NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer, enabling you to minimize your presence on the internet, almost like a cloaking device. It also allows you to hunt out the best TV and movies and shopping deals by changing your region. It prevents big internet from gathering and using your personal data. There's even a data breach scanner and mesh net for your own remote private network included. When Zin asked, what's the Predator movie got to do with NordVPN or CitizenCon or Star Citizen? I said, what's any of our NordVPN ads got to do with anything? Grab yourself NordVPN in the links below for a seamless, secure internet experience. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway. For October 2023, we are giving away a Constellation Phoenix. This luxury multi-crew ship can be used as a mission runner, an explorer, a base of operations, and more. It comes with a luxury P-72 Archimedes snub, as well as the Lynx rover, allowing you to have on and off planet excursions. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. This is the bit of the video where I appeal to you to try and join the channel memberships and give us money. We have a load of you that are Patreons or have become YouTube channel members with the join button under my videos. And that goes a huge way in helping the channel and enabling us to make daily Star Citizen news entertainment. But there are a load of other ways to help us. Liking, commenting, sharing these videos. That helps the channel grow. Thank you for watching to the end. Please get involved in the comments section and I hope you have a great October.